so our breath, as we already said last week, uh, is very much related with our emotional life. Right? We see that when you're tight, the breathing pattern is different. When you're calm, the breathing pattern is different. So you could do two things. You could have a calm mind and make your breathing pattern uh, more natural, right? or more peaceful. Or you could change your breathing pattern and make your mind more peaceful, right? So the last one is a bit easier. Normally the breathing, if you sometimes feel then the difference between the right and the left nostril, the strength is often not exactly the same, yeah? because our mind is often just uh, not really completely at peace, you know? So in order to regulate that, and also to regulate emotions relation with the, related with the breath, then there is this technique of, of the nine round breathing. So what we will do is you take your left, or in this case right first, your right index finger, right? And then that right index finger, you with a nail, yeah, with the backside of your finger, you press against your left nostril. So you block your left nostril, right? And by doing so, then you inhale to your right, right? So when you then inhale to your right, then when you finished with inhaling, then you hold it for a second or two, yeah? And then you block your right nostril and breathe out to your left, right? So you, you go in to your right and out to your left, right? If you've done that three times, then you change to your left index finger, you do the same thing, but then you block first your right nostril and into the left, right? And then you hold it for a second or two and then you block left and out right. Yeah, so you do that one, two, three times as well. And then you do both nostrils, yeah? So you breathe in, you hold it for a second or two and then you breathe out. Yeah, so that's kind of uh, what we call the nine round breathing because it's three times three, right? So, yeah. What we also did last week is the the counting of the breath, right? That we uh, try to generate a kind of um, concentration. Yeah, and also last week we talked about um, alertness and mindfulness that you make sure that you are counting. Right? So whenever there's a thought coming, then you should recognize that with alertness and with mindfulness you bring your mind back to the counting of the breath, right? So those two mental factors are quite important. Meditation doesn't mean just uh, try to space out or, or try to relax, of course. Relax relaxation is a result of meditation, but in the Buddhist doctrine we don't really see that as a goal. Over time you just see things coming and going in your mind rather than being influenced by it. Yeah, so it's yeah, sometimes quite an interesting movie inside. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to watch movies outside, you can just uh, yeah, watch your mind. But then watch your mind, same with a movie, right? People can be completely absorbed into the screen. You know that? Yeah, so if you're completely absorbed in the screen, you say, hi, how are you doing? They say, hmm, and then they don't say anything else, right? So then if that's the case with your uh, afflictions or disturbing thoughts, then you're stuck. Yeah. But you can look at a person watching a movie, right? You can look at the screen, see what's happening in the movie, and you see the person, how the person is sucked into the screen, without getting in, engaged yourself into the movie. You see that? So in a similar way, with these kind of meditation techniques, you actually be capable over time just to watch the things in your mind, rather than being sucked into it. But these thoughts, they have potentials in the mind. Yeah? They, they, they come and go. So eventually, we have to transform it. Yeah, so for that purpose, uh, we have an analytical meditation. Disturbing emotions, they want us to, um, you know, think in a particular way and say, oh, this person is bad or this situation is bad because of this and this and this. Within a few split seconds, if you're irritated, your mind is capable of coming to a conclusion and believe that. But if that conclusion is correct or not, that's a question. So we try to contemplate the faults of the disturbing emotions, right? And then uh, we come to a conclusion, and then we focus on that conclusion, right? And then after that, we, we contemplate the benefits of the antidote 
for example, practicing patience, right? So practicing patience is often misunderstood that people, practicing patience doesn't mean you overcooked vegetables somewhere in the corner of the room or like a doormat or something like that. You can have a mind of patience, but being very direct with a person, you see? That's the skill, that you be direct if needed with an individual or a person who needs to be told something, but inside there's no disturbance of mind, right? So that's kind of an incredible skill and kind of emotional intelligence we have to develop. So what we do in analytical meditation, you contemplate the faults or the drawbacks of the disturbing emotion and you contemplate the benefits yeah, of its antidote. If you do that over time, you can imagine that the stronger that insight comes, the more you believe in that, and the more you believe in that, the less will that disturbing emotion take over. Because the next time that disturbing emotion comes, you recognize that with alertness, right? And with mindfulness, you remember your insight of having contemplated the faults of the affliction, or the faults of the disturbing emotion, and the benefits of the antidote, you see? So then those two mental factors again play a crucial role. My friends, after engaging in techniques for, for one person, one of my friends, for within two, three years, he said, he used to be rat out of anger or, or irritation in meetings, but now people say, oh, you changed, what happened to you? <laughs> so that's possible within a few years. Another friend of mine took, took 10 years, but <laughs> It depends, right? Training the mind is not easy, you know, so that's also important for us to know, like we do a few evenings. Don't expect you go, go out the door and you, you're completely cured of, of anger or something like that. That's not going to happen, right? But with some effort, for sure, you can transform. Um, as Santideva said, there's nothing impossible, you know, by the power of habituation, right? So that's kind of uh, just a matter of fact. You put some effort, if you do these things on a daily basis, like the awareness meditation and concentration meditation and then this kind of analytical approach to the difficulties you're facing, yeah, then for sure over time there will be transformation.